Okay. So, does anyone have anything they'd like to share, comment on, or ask any questions? Um, I have a question about the um, Hachigong again. So, yes. uh, so yeah. So that that was super helpful. Uh, last time I asked about uh, drawing in through the pericardium point and then exhaling through the lagoon. Uh, so I've been feeling that, and then um, I wanted to clarify what you do at the end when you're kind of using both hands forward and holding in. Um, I've been doing like small heavenly circle kind of like from the um, perineum and then up the front and down the back and kind of sealing in. And um, I don't recall if that's what you're doing. So I was just kind of curious when what you're doing. And then I had another question about that too, um, about the small heavenly circle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so at the end, what you do is, you know, the first, you know, after the first exhale, uh, where you push both hands forward, you bring the hands up to the crown, and then you bring it down to the side of your body, down the side of your legs, and then you bring it up to the inside of your legs, and then the front, uh, you know, through this, the conception vessel until uh, it comes up to your chest and then you spread it out to the inside of your arms, you know, through the pericardium point and then you push it back out. And then that's a, and then that's the first one. The second one, you start again with, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, the head. But then you come down your pair, uh, what you call conception, and then you bring it to the inside of your leg and then up to the outside of your leg, to the sides of your leg, and then the sides of your ribs, and then to your armpit, um, uh, and then again out through the inside of your arms and then your palms. And so one time you go through, you know, the outside to the inside and then one time you go from the inside to the outside, and then you finish from the outside to the inside. So it's three times. Yes. So, okay, so you start with the crown. First time you go down the outside, up the inside, and out the lagong. Yes. And then the second time you start with the conception vessel, and you go up and down the outside. Uh, it's like down the inside and then up the outside. Uh, oh, down the inside. Up the outside to yes. the sides and then again out the level. Yes. And then you finish with the, and, the and first it's not. One. It's not the regular laogong, it's a martial laogong. The martial yeah. laogong. Yeah, the, because the regular laogong, you know, is where- um, It's a pericardium point. Yeah, it's a pericardium point, you know, where it goes down the middle, you know, it, it's where the middle finger bends. Uh, whereas the martial laogong, it's where the fourth finger bends, the fourth, the fourth digit. Right. So. Okay, that- that answers my question. Thank you so much. Was, you're welcome. Yeah. So, so you're doing all this on the inhale. So you you're you push out through the both hands forward, and then you inhale again, and then you're doing all this holding your breath with the inhale. Correct. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Thank yeah, you this, so much. This is happening yeah. on the inhale. And then on the exhale, you know, you push your arms out and you push all the chi out. So. Ah, okay. You inhale so that, the chi in and then you exhale the chi out. Got it. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, that was really helpful because I was like, when you described it last week, I was feeling it through the, you know, the legs as well, but I haven't been able to access the legs just doing it in practice. So, um, seems like this, this will help. So, okay. That, that answers my question. Um, the other one doesn't seem relevant anymore, so. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Pastor, do you did you did you want to? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for that question. That was an awesome question, an awesome answer. That was super helpful for me as well. Really appreciate how many of you asking that question and your your answer, Master Kim. Um, I just wanted to share a couple things. The um, experience the spirit body. That you gave me some feedback um on that and that was super super helpful and it was kind of really surprising what a difference it made um one actually with like the flexibility yoga i was also having that experience like um uh in the the yoga part and it was like i had a totally different body and i felt how much i had been like restricting myself um, by like over focusing on my physical body, um, and it felt like just being in the spirit body. Um, it felt like everything I was doing felt uh, free, and it also felt like I, from that place, naturally like I was synced with you. Like I didn't have to do anything to sync. I was actually naturally synced and experiencing the syncing. Um, and it also became a lot more clear where when I'm not syncing with people, it's not that I'm not synced. It's just that it's that I don't, I don't want to sync. I'm like resisting syncing with them. So that was really helpful. And also <laughs> was kind of shocking how much my, I realized like my eyes engage with everything I do, even, even just trying to like, even just bring my awareness to like to the third eye, I was like, oh, I can feel my eyes are engaging as I do that. And I didn't realize how much my eyes are engaging. And it was, it was causing tension in my body. Um, and it also was really interesting just feeling the spirit body, how it, um, like this, it felt like the spirit body did things on its own. And actually we kind of like parts of me would leave and do things. And it felt like that was just natural and not anything to do, but it was doing that. Um, and so that was really helpful. And then the other thing I want to share is just this really interesting, a long time ago, you'd given a teaching about when at the, like when we bow to you to feel like we're receiving the lineage. Um, and so that's been a really like helpful practice for me. And what's really interesting is it feels like every day um like what I'm receiving is different it's like not the same thing it's like different parts um kind of like appropriately for that day and it also feels like it's not like that's the only it's like it feels like it's always happening but bringing awareness to it feels like it it becomes more clear um and it's like more my system is more conscious of it so and I just wanted to share those things and thank you for all the feedback and teachings you're welcome there's a you know, it's like a good analogy for what you said about the lineage. It's like the same thing as, oh, the background noise, like a really loud background noise. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you. Okay, so um, it's kind of like breathing. You know, we all breathe. So when we're connected to a lineage, we're actually always connected to it and we're always receiving. But just like with breathing, we need a time to bring awareness to how we're breathing for us to breathe, you know, well. And the same with the lineage, you know, and the same, you know, we're always paying attention to something and our attention is always doing what it's meant to do. But if we don't do meditation, 
then we don't have awareness of to the quality of our attention. So if, you know, so just the same way, things are happening all the time. You know, we have a, an automated system where it just, things just get taken care of by themselves. And so we don't have to, in some ways say, we don't have to pay attention to it, but it's not true because, you know, it's like you need a dedicated time to take care, you know, of yourself. Um, and just in the same way that you need a dedicated time to take care of yourself, even though your body is always kind of just taking care of you, in the same way you need a dedicated time to take care of your breathing, your attention, you know, in the same way when you're doing a greeting or devotion practice, you're just taking a dedicated time to give acknowledgement to the lineage that you're receiving from. So, and, you know, and really increases the quality of your ability to receive from the lineage. And so that's really good. And in regards to the spirit body, you know, and so for the listener, in case you don't know what a spirit body is, it's basically your energetic body, but you call it a spirit body because your energy, so uh, your spirit body, you can tell it's, it's got, it's like energy with intelligence and your spirit body is what would, what would continue and survive even after your physical passing. And so what passes on is actually your spirit body. And you can actually tell, you know, um, it's, if you will, you could call the ghost within you. Um, and you can tell that that's actually your true self. Uh, the more you become aware of your energy, you can really feel it. Um, you can you become more and more aware of that. And you start realizing that actually what is having the experience is actually not the physical body, but actually the spirit body. And that the consciousness actually really is a spirit body experiencing it. And it's a very distinct experience the more you have this. But once you become aware of your spirit body and the more you become aware of the spirit body, you start realizing, you stop identifying with your body it's not that the body becomes less important. It's just you start realizing you're not your body, just as a person realizes that they're not their thought. You know, and before you have that realization, we tend to think that we are our thought. And at some point, uh, a person realizes, oh, I'm not my thought. And they start realizing, oh, I'm not my feelings. I'm actually bigger than that. You know, I am, but in the I am, at the core of the I am experience is your spiritual self or your spirit body. And so now the key thing that actually is really interesting about that is, is that you start realizing that all the fears that we have comes from over identifying with the body. Um, and when you become clearly aware of your spirit body, you stop over identifying with your body. And you start realizing that all the fear arises from over identifying with your body. And as you start resting in your spirit body or as you start being your spirit body or I don't even know how to, as you just start being, which is actually being, which is actually identifying with your spirit body. As you just start being, um, you can just be. Uh, but you're no longer divided because you're not trying to be your body, but actually, you know, you're, you're not just your body. And um, what you start realizing is one of the areas that you over-identify is actually, as you said, your eyes. And as you stop trying to over-identify and try and see things, you actually let go and you can start feeling your spirit body much more clearly. And as it happens, um, you start realizing that your spirit body is life itself. 
and it's eternal. And so that's why your fear goes away. Whereas when you are over identified with your, your physical body, then you can tell it's going towards death. You can tell it's uh, impermanence. And so you're concerned for it and you're afraid for its well being and so on and so forth. And so, you know, it's like the classical spiritual teaching of, you know, going towards eternal life, um, you know, and towards, you know, life itself versus, um, you know, going towards death and then choosing love over fear because when you feel your spirit body, you will notice that, oh, you know, this is love. Uh, and so <clears throat> anyway, so that's actually one of the reasons why we start feeling freedom from our body because we stop over identifying with it. And then because of that, we, the tension stops. Um, and what you'll notice is that whenever you're afraid, your spirit bo body or your true self, if you use classical language, uh, basically forgot who it truly is and thought that, you know, it was that, it was that part of the body. So a big reason of the, the bubble practice is so that you can become aware of these different aspects and then you can become more and more over time identified with the actual feeling of your spiritual body and the different aspects, but especially and how it's actually distinctly separate from the physical body. And once you feel that you can feel your spirit body just residing. And that's why people would use that analogy that the body is a temple of the spirit. And so you just actually having more and more of the clear experience. And so continue with that practice, uh, you know, you'll gain much food from that. It's like, you know, it's actually the, the peace that transcends all understanding if this is what they're talking about. So. Thank you so much. That really nourished my soul. And yeah, I, that really did something for me. I really appreciate it. I tied a lot of things and I feel like it made a lot of sense because it felt like it feels like when I'm in the spirit body, I can actually like take care of my body when I'm over identified mm. with it. It's like, because as you said, I feel fear. I can't actually be a steward of it. Yes. 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 When you're in your spirit body, you're like, oh, it kind of feels like, oh, this is my, I, this is, this is a tongue in cheek. It's a, it's actually more than that, but you know, it's kind of like, oh, this is my pet to take care of. Yeah, that's how yeah, it feels. <laughs> yeah, you know, and but you know, it's more than a pet, of course. I mean, something yeah, of course. precious, but uh, but you know, you kind of feel that you've been tasked with your body to take care of it, you know, in a loving manner, and you get to have a relationship, and um, you know, and this is you know, like something we typically don't get to experience, but if you over identify with your body you don't actually have that feel. The feel that you have is more actually, whether we realize it or not, it's like that of a child feeling like we're left to our own devices and having mm -hmm. to take care of a body. And we're actually caught up in fear. So, okay, very good. That's Thank you so much, Master Jim. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I'm actually pretty much done cleaning. Does anyone have any last minute questions or any quick comments or anything quick they'd like to share before we close for today? I can share, I had been playing with the um, sort of idealized self or potential self, feeling that behind me. And today what emerged was um, feeling the idealized other or like the, the situation that I wanted to be in to bring forward the way that I wanted to feel. So just another aspect of the same thing, but I found that helpful with your, um, your feedback about feeling as if there's sunshine behind my heart and then just imagining you know, being on the beach and the other people on the beach and just the whole um, 
the whole environment and clarified for me how I, the emotion that I was going for and felt like it kind of kept, created a feedback loop. So that was really helpful. Mm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. I was like, and for the listeners, I was just talking about imagining that the sun was shining from behind uh, the back, right behind the heart, where it was warming the heart and made the, and radiated the heart until the heart uh, started, you know, basically soaking up all the light, became light, and then started radiating naturally that light out until the rest of the universe became the light, until everything was light, and then we're she was just resting in that light. And so uh, you can have it in front of you in the back in this particular case. Uh, uh, it was better for it to be in the back. But um, anyway, so if you wanna play with that, play with that, it's a great practice. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Now with that, I got a scooch. You all have a great rest of the day. And have a great day of enlightenment, or I want to say have a great day of cultivation and just being on the path, which, you know, is the path to that. So, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you much, Master Kim. Welcome. Welcome. Bye.